So President Biden is set to give that primetime address about five hours from now. He's pushing for billions of dollars in aid for Israel. Our next guest says the U.S. should not take its eyes off Vladimir Putin while all of this is happening in the Middle East because the Russian president is, quote, helping Hamas hurt the West. That is the title of Josh Rogan's opinion piece this week in the Washington Post, and Josh is with us now. All right, so Josh, important to note here, you write that reports of direct Russian military support for Hamas remain unconfirmed. So explain how Putin right now is using Hamas against the West. Right, well, at this moment, Vladimir Putin is in Beijing meeting with his dear friend Xi Jinping uh, to talk about the new world order that they are trying to build together. And for both of them, their governments, their state medias have been pumping out pro-Hamas propaganda, but not just criticizing Israel, but criticizing the United States, that we're to blame for the war, uh, that it's our neglect of the United States, of, of the region that has led to these rising tensions. And moreover, that Ukraine itself is a distraction from this region that helped exacerbate this problem. So Vladimir Putin's number one goal in the entire world is to get the U.S. government and the U.S. Congress to stop Ukraine aid. That's what President Biden is giving a whole speech about tonight. He's going to say that Israel, Ukraine, they both need the aid. We can't choose one or the other. And Vladimir Putin is proving that, that, that he's right by showing that he's on Hamas and Iran's side, which is something he, he's been, a side that he's been on for a very long time, actually. So you point out in your column that Israel has been less explicit in its support of Ukraine because it needs Russia's help with Syria. What happens now, though? How do you see Israel's relationship with Russia playing out? Right. Israel's relationship with Russia is destroyed. And that was Vladimir Putin's first move, was he, did, he abandoned what had been a very business-like relationship with Netanyahu uh, to side with Hamas. And, you know, we just saw that the Iranian proxies are sh uh, shooting missiles at U.S. forces in, uh, uh, off of the coast of Yemen. Orrin Lieberman reported that uh, Iranian militias are uh, aiming drones at U.S. bases in Iraq. I can tell you right now from my reporting, this is first on CNN, that Iraqi militias sponsored by Iran have launched drones at U.S. bases in Syria. Syria, the al tamf garrison, which is on the border between Ar Iraq and Syria and uh, Jordan. So this is an escalation across the board. And the Iranians are activating their proxies in many, many, many countries. And how we will, will respond will determine whether or not this current conflict balloons across the region. And the Russians and the Chinese government are in the middle of that. They're working together uh, diplomatically in the UN, propaganda. The Palestinian groups get all of their funding through Moscow-based crypto exchanges. Mm -hmm. They're all fighting against Israel and Ukraine and us. How do you see Ukraine aid being, you know, obviously Biden is trying to tie these all together. Uh, and not just Ukraine aid and aid to Israel, but other things as well. Hey, Congress, pass all of this as a joint package. How do you see Ukraine aid relating to the Israel aid? Does this increase or decrease the chances it gets passed? Right. It's a, it's a very risky gambit, Brianna. You're absolutely right. By putting them together, he's, he wants to pressure Republicans who don't like Ukraine to swallow the Ukraine aid because they don't want to vote against the Israel aid. So that's why you have a lot of the far-right Republicans and the MAGA guys saying that we should pass them separately. Now, if you pass them separately, they would both pass separately, but they both would have to come to the floor separately. That's and right. there's no Republican Speaker of the House, and there's no assurance that the Ukraine aid would ever get a vote in, in the Congress. That's why the White House is putting them together. Uh, it might work. It might just work, but it's going to be a lot of Ukraine aid, less Israel aid, and uh, a major, uh, at least a bunch of Republicans are going to have to support it. And I, I don't know. I don't, really don't know if it's going to work or not. So tying those two points together in the aid that President Biden is asking for is also a significant amount of investment in Taiwan, additional aid for Taiwan. You mentioned a moment ago that President Xi and President Putin are watching all of this. They had uh, a meeting uh, just a few days ago discussing a new world order, so to speak. So in your mind, how should the United States respond to the Iranian proxies in the region and to those uh, other powers that are closely watching how we respond to all of this. Right. Well, I think we need to divide it between military response and financial response. You know, uh, as for the attacks on U.S. forces, I think the risk of escalation is so great that I would expect the administration to be very careful in their retaliation and to think very carefully about how what the second and third degree effects are. But when it comes to the funding, it's very clear that this is going to be the last emergency funding bill that we're going to be able to get through Congress if we can get it through Congress uh, before the next election. That's in a year from now. Uh, so uh, this is the only chance they have. So they're going to throw the kitchen sink in. That means border funding. That means funding for the Pacific. That means Ukraine funding, Israel funding, funding to modernize and replenish U.S. stockpiles. 
we're talking a lot of money. It could be upwards of 80 to 100 billion dollars. That's no small amount of money, but uh, the alternative would be to uh, enter a year in 2024 when all of these challenges and all of these wars are likely to get deeper and worse and to have the U.S. military and our allies unprepared. And I think that's an alternative that the President of the United States is going to argue vehemently against in his speech to the nation tonight. Josh Rogan, great to get your perspective on all these issues. Anytime. Thanks.